Okay, let's see. 2021. Okay. Season 9 as well. All right. All right. Okay. Still not a lot of games. Yeah. How many games do you usually play like a season? Uh, normally, I think less than less than a hundred. Less yeah. than yeah. Okay. Pretty little. So I think like if you really want to hit diamond, uh, you gotta like bump up the the games, because th there's okay. no way to like you need to be a fucking prodigy to hit diamond with like a hundred games. Be because you need the experience. It's this game is hard. Uh, there's many champions, many combinations. So uh, to just play a few games, like you, it's gonna be really hard to diamond, in my opinion. You say realistically, platinum is more achievable right yeah. now. Okay. Yeah, sure. Like how? Yeah. Even even platinum, honestly, uh, it would be. Um, could be could be difficult it it depends on um how good you are okay, <laughs> okay but let's look at the, that replay of your replay let's make sure this is recording good I'm gonna be recording the game and then okay. i'll be able to send it to you after okay borderless all right let's go so Fiora. Yes. How much have you played Fiora? She's a Not pretty much. hard champion. Yeah, she's pretty yeah. difficult. Um so that's one thing, right? Yeah. Like you you can definitely commit to her, but she's gonna require some some mechanical ability. She's gonna require some attention. There are definitely easier options to pick that will allow for um a smoother journey where you can like let's say Jax for example it would be easier to to reach a, a higher level with quicker hmm. so this is silver four right I guess this uh, uh, solo key game I think my teammates were gold Let's actually check. I think gold four. They, they okay, the border. Yeah, they had the gold border. Gold four. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's quite a big difference. That's a very big difference actually between uh, silver four and gold four. Yeah, this is some uh, gold three, gold four, and high silver. Okay. Okay. Let's just uh, let's just start off. I just want to make sure that you are running the right runes. We're going okay. conquer. That should be fine. Are you sharing your screen? I can only see your profile. Oh my bad. I was sharing. Okay. Oh, I should be sharing. Oh, right here. Okay, watch stream. Okay, got it. Nice, nice. Okay, can you see this too? Like the draw. Uh, yeah. I can see your drawing, yes. Cool. And we're good to go. Okay, so we did a little invade here. What do you think, like, you're good at and what do you struggle with? Is there um... anything, like, in, in particular you're very confused about? anything particular do you uh, just want me to generally look at this replay or is there a, like an area where you want me to focus extra extra on? uh there was there was like one point where i was even in levels with yone and i started split pushing um i i did the inhibitor but then like yone just out leveled me by like three or four uh yeah okay out leveled me later on in the game and i didn't know why yeah, it could be risky to take an early inhibitor, uh, especially okay. just one, because um, your minions will be stronger, so they will push in and deny a lot of creeps from you guys. So you guys really need to push the tempo if you're going to do that. We can talk about that when uh, when we see it. Okay, so 
he started off with an assist. Lily, I got a kill. Great. The first thing we can look at uh, your perspective here. The first thing you can pay attention to here is gonna, going to be your jungler, right? So you can see that your jungler starts blue, which means she's going to be farming towards you, right? Yeah. So that's the first thing you can think about. Um, to get information on the enemy jungler, you can look at where, um, who's leashing, right? So if you see bot leashing, maybe they come in late to the lane, likely that the enemy jungler also started a bot and thus farming towards top. And this could influence like how you want to play the early waves, right? Um, but I would say that's pretty, pretty advanced. So let's just try to keep it simple here. But you can definitely note that Lilia is farming towards you. So running TP D blade, he, he does the same. Um, so we see. So early, it's a, um, it's definitely about trying to hit level two. And you have established a push right now, which I like, which means you have more minions, so you have more XP. So if you can keep this going, you will be able to hit level two first, and then you can just fight him. That's just the okay. fundamental of every lane. So it, let's see what, what happens. Yeah, you get level two. I don't like that you, you don't utilize it, right? Uh -oh. So you get level two, but you don't walk forward. And uh, I try to pressure him. Like, because you're level two and he's level one, he can't fight you. So you want to deny creeps from him. Okay. So now he just got level two for free. So I would definitely try to get level two. Which by the way, level two would be one wave, the first wave, and then one melee minion. I see. So this is how you know. So you get level two and then you want to the push forward. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, we're definitely losing a lot of trades early. I would definitely lose yeah. that. A lot of top lane is match up understanding. Um You're tanking all these creeps, right? Oh. Um. So any single target ability or auto attack uh, on an enemy when there's creeps nearby means you will draw the aggro. So if you're a Q, for example, we'll draw the aggro. The creeps. So here you're drawing all these aggro. Oh. Uh. All these minions. These caster minions deal more damage than the melee minions. So you need to be extra careful with them. So this is five casters that's hitting you during this trade. Okay. So early game, that means that's a lot of damage. So even though you might get some damage on him, you're going to take too much. And you can see at the end of the, the trade, you, you basically just lose that, right? Yeah. So that's something to think about when you're trading, to look at the minions so you don't trade into a billion minions. Wow. Yeah, you just told uh, me. <laughs> the, the typical Yone player, right? They're over aggressive. <laughs> yeah, he just couldn't handle himself. Like, he just couldn't stop himself here. <laughs> this is going to happen a lot in this um, ELO range. I, I like to talk about the loser's game, which means you just play to not make mistakes, and then the enemies will... Uh, make mistakes that you can capitalize on. So you don't need to do anything fancy and they will just give you free kills like this. Okay, so let's take the wave. He comes back, he definitely TP'd right. That's something yeah. good time. I believe he flashed too, which is uh, great. So we can recall, we can TP back. Cool, what do you buy? Sheen. Um, you have no potions here. That's giving me some anxiety uh, because you have no sustain. So you need to be careful with that. 
Yeah, definitely had gold to afford a potion there. Yeah. You try to get refillable. Refillable is so strong. Uh, but if you had gold for a potion, definitely get one. Um, okay. Because he basically just has 120 health more <laughs> now. So he has a potion. They're very strong early, of course. Okay. So, I mean, this is just completely fine. We're just going to last it here. Try to trade if we can. Um, we're obviously always noting that our jungler is on the opposite side of the map right now. So we are playing weak side from our perspective. We don't know where the enemy jungler is. All right. Um, if when you get a little bit more advanced, you can know that the enemy jungler started bot side. And that means that the first camp that they did um, is going to respawn around 420. Right? So usually i can kind of predict that the enemy jungler is probably somewhere here right it's probably going back to that camp we can we can check here we go right yeah so that's a little bit more advanced but um you can you can kind of tell that the spawns let's see how oh, the indicator is bugged or he never d did that camp but that's not something I would get like too involved in right now uh, in these ranks. Something you could could do though. So I like this. Now wave's pretty shitty here, right? Yeah. I want the wave in front of the tower. So here I would always look to make sure I crash this. I know you you're a bit scared of graves here, so you're gonna ward. Honestly, I think you're fine. Like the wave's so big that I don't think Graves can really gank here, reliably, but, but this is fine. Roshin, nice, great. So what, what are you going to do with the temple? Here, you could look to, if you had a control ward or, or if you have uh, more trinkets, you can walk in here and kind of uh, place, like, you can place a ward here, here, maybe, that's a really good ward. This is a really OP ward, but it requires you to walk very far. Um, but this is fine. Maybe Why is here. that OP ward, you which, said? Which ward? This one? Uh, yeah. Because it's like, it's so rare and it's so deep. So basically you can see it covers every path. It covers this path. It covers here. It covers here. It covers like... It covers everywhere, right? So if the jungler oh. just does wolves or does any camp here, you can see. So if the jungler, let's say, walks here, you see him. Or okay. if he wants to lane gank and he thinks he's <laughs> tricky, he might walk here. Or he does any camp, right? I see. Thank you. So that's how you want to think about wards, that they're covering a lot of entrances. Because if you, if you see graves do raptors, and then you see that he's walking here, and then he's out of fog. You know that he's probably going to look to gank mid, or that he's going to invade. Mid invade, maybe, maybe uh, Herald, right? If you see that he's walking up here, you know for sure he's going, like, um, to gank you. Or maybe do Herald. Nice, I would freeze this now. Are you familiar with with freezes? Uh, freezing. Uh, the wave? keep. Yeah, keep the the nine minions. Keep it like yeah. in front of our. So basically, yeah. make sure that the wave is pushing into you, and that you just kind of freeze it. You lock it in place. Um, ideally, you want to have at least four minions extra than your wave. So in this okay. case, you have three here, and then three here. You have four extra. So this is perfect. And the reason you want to do this is because, first of all, we're pre-10 minutes. After 10 minutes, it's um, not that good. Like, I'd rather play for Herald, maybe move down to Drake, or push for plates. But because we're so early into the game, XP means a lot, and the plates are super tanky. We also can't really roam down here. Herald haven't even spawned, or hasn't even spawned yet, so... 
freezing is good pre-10 minutes. Gotcha. He's low HP too, so he can't really walk forward. So you're you're in a great position here. Like he is doomed. He's doomed. Top lane is all about wave management. Right? So you're freezing, this is great. Okay, so I would trim the wave a bit, right? It seems yeah. like it's a it's getting out of control. Because if it kills all these minions, then you're gonna have to tank, tank it to keep it here uh, until the next wave arrives. And you don't want that. So you just wanna trim it so it's like plus four minions. And you're not really trimming it enough here, I think. So you're gonna take damage. Okay, it's all right. You have to W. So, mm. but it's okay. You hold the freeze. Okay, there's a fight here. That's fine. That's the downside of freezing, by the way. Um, you give priority, right? You can't move. Yeah. If there's a fight, you can't move. Because there's a lot of minion minions that you're going to lose. That's why you want to do it pretty early into the game. Because there's less likely that they're going, going to be fights. I love this. This is great. We have a level advantage on him. He recalled, though, with items. Ilias coming. The wave's getting a little bit out of control. I would definitely push here. Pressure him. Okay, he's always coming back here. Nice. He's gonna Q. Mechanics looking a little bit sloppy. You're low attack speed though. Let's just uh, look at this again. So, like, quickly here. Um, you know that, first of all, you know that he's coming back here, which is good. You're, you guys are waiting. But then he has to run to the tower, right? Yeah. If he runs back here, he's going to die. <laughs> There's no way. So you know he's going in this direction. So you should anticipate that. And you should be moving. You should be standing here and autoing him. And then walking him down, right? towards the right. tower but what happens here is that you're kind of sloppy with that and he just gets <laughs> he just creates distance immediately because i think you queue this way i would rather yeah. be queuing this way and and so you can walk him down it doesn't really matter in this situation but it's like a red flag for me when i see that Let's say he actually had flash, so maybe he could have gotten away. Push in the wave, that's nice. Let's see this. Okay, it's, it's alright, it's alright. Okay, nice. We have a big lead now. We're up 26 minions. Let's see how you utilize it. So now we're approaching 10 minutes. I'm not looking to freeze now. Not looking to freeze now. Uh, this is okay. This is okay. We're still... But but you see that uh, he's roaming now. And he's less punishing because um, it's less early into the game. So he can actually like do stuff here. He's stronger. He can actually roam and, get, uh, and have an impact. So if you're stronger, like I would rather be pushing now because, you know, he can impact the map. And when he's away, you 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 rather want to take plates, um, because the plates are not as tanky now as they are uh, at five min. But this is still fine. This is this is okay. I would definitely try to build a slow push. Yeah, nice. Just last hit now. So what I'm thinking here is I I don't crash this wave. I wait for the next wave. And then I crash that, and then maybe um, ping Lilia to either dive, or we take Herald. Okay. Right? So you're basically planning ahead and saying, okay, I'm slow pushing this in, and then when I've crashed it, um, I'll make a move. Right? Either dive, or take the Herald. And here you need to be proactive and ping your intention to, to get Lilia on the same page. So right. let's see what happens. Really like it so far. You're just last hitting, waiting for the next wave to come in. You can definitely fight him. 
let's just watch this again. This lane is very mechanical. You queue in. See, like, I. When he eats like this, he he has to go here, right? He has to come yeah. back here. He will always come back there, no matter where he runs. And you know he has to run to the tower. So the thing is here, you're level eight. He's level seven. Like you're you're stronger. He has boots. You have you have like. Uh, a ruby sheen and hardbone axe you're definitely stronger so i would just i don't care about him here i just want to make sure that i'm uh, i stop him from running and then i walk him in here you get baited and you hit him here it's the exact same mistake as over here yeah so uh, this is already a big takeaway if you're stronger and winning make sure you walk them in he has to run he has to go this way he can't go any other way. Okay, so let's crash this wave. Lilia is here. I would I would ping dive. He's so low, right? So we can ping dive. Okay. Only thing we think about is where's enemy jungler and where's enemy mid. Because we can't see those. So those are the only variables that can mess up this dive. So I would be a little bit careful here, though, because we can't see LeBlanc and we can't see Graves. Okay. But I would still look for it. Yeah. So here's to the Blanc TP. Okay, <laughs> I got the wrong right. one. Yeah. Let's see this again. The clone is pretty tricky. Oh, she she was tricky with it though. Yeah. <laughs> she she just is still. I'm not sure how that works. Um if she can tell her clone to... I think her clone always just runs. But maybe she can control it. Hmm. I wouldn't care too much about that. But as you could see, the dive failed because mid, right? So mid stopped that dive. Now, I don't think there's anything in particular you could have done about that, though. Maybe you could just say, eh, it's too risky because mid jungle missing. Maybe we just give it up. Oh. Um. But that's fine. I, th I think that was fine. Ooh, do you have flash up? I, is flash bugged? I can't tell. I think it did. So you obviously don't see the TP, that's okay. Now you definitely need to run. I don't like that you, you don't like go this way and try at least. Oh. Like, because you never win the 1v3. Yeah. So, like... Sure, you don't see that, but the moment you see LeBlanc, you know you don't win the 1v2. And now you even see him. Like, I would uh, definitely try to run to my tower here. I didn't see the Yone, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But even if you don't yeah. see the Yone and you just see these, you know you don't win. Like, just run. Okay. okay. Like, I'm scared as hell when I see, but like, they know something you don't, <laughs> in my eyes. But I would still run here. Uh, but you don't really run towards your tower. Because if you have flash, if you just run this way, hug the wall, Q, and then flash, you're fine. And you pull three people here and his TP. Okay, it's alright though. I'm. It's a bit unfortunate that they got Herald there. Okay, I, I just want to go back actually uh, to the... see I want oh I went back so far what <clears throat> see one kill Let's see yeah he roams okay so here we are again I just want to see if you could could have taken Herald here Let's see I think Lilia went to invade. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay, like, I like the dive idea. It's just that mid and jungle are missing, so it's too risky. So okay. here you could be proactive, and the next time you're in this situation, you could say, okay, mid jungle are missing, uh, maybe it's too risky. 
So maybe we just like look for this, wait for this guy to come in and we take Herald instead because it's safer. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a bit picky here, honestly. Because it was Lilia walking in. But you could be more like demanding. Okay. Game's still fine though, for sure. You TP back. You have Triforce, you're really strong. Let's see this fight. TP. Ah, you see again? Same mistake. <laughs> this is like Yone yeah. specific though. So in my in my world, right? So there you need to first identify who's stronger. Do I win or does he win? I I knew I win, yeah, for yeah, sure. You knew you win for sure. You have Triforce, look at his items. He has a fucking yeah. bow and a long sword and boots. You win for sure. So when when you have established that you win the 1v1, then you need to play as you win and that is like he's stuck with you here and not the other way around so i would like as i said before i would make sure that i run him down like he has to run away yeah so i need to make sure i cut the escape because this is useless you get some damage but he's gonna escape See, once again, he, he gets to escape because you chase the clone, the E-clone, instead of just waiting for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would just stand here and wait for the clone and then walk him in. Um, but we're still ahead, so that's nice. We can push really fast with Triforce. He's already back. So what does he have? Yeah, he still has... No mythic item. Or any legendary item. Why did we take this is such a bad trade here? We have no sustain, which is a little bit worrying. That's fine though. Are we getting a bit low? I would probably just shove recall. Nice. Will you take tower though? Let's look at the all in. He flashes. Yeah, he flash. Really nice that he flashes. Where's your W? Oh, you don't W really? You have W. You QW okay. for sure. Q w, okay. Yeah, QW. Um, w will slow him and you will be able to, to catch him. That's a very um, basic Fura combo. So I think you could have killed him, like, honestly, three, four times uh, at this point. But we're still ahead, so it's all right. He has no flash. You can see everybody on that side of the map. He's pretty low, so we definitely push here. Yeah, I'll look for dive for sure. Ooh, you could W that, right? So here, here's oh. where anticipation comes in. Um, you need to think about when you play Fiora, what can you W? If you W his uh, his uh, third Q, that's his CC ability, I think you can W his ulti too. I'm not, not exactly sure about that interaction, but you should be able to. And you aim it towards him, you can stun him, and then you just win, right? Yeah. So literally here, you just hit the tower, and if he's going to do this, he, this is suicide. He's just suicided. Because that's you, you're supposed to be waiting for that. And then you press W. So in your mind, you're like, I'm going to W his third Q. So if he thirds Q, I just W. And then I win. But he's stunned, you just kill him. But you're not prepared for it. So you, like... Yeah, you're not ready. So missed opportunity to kill him again. So... I think you have, like, missed five opportunities. Like, you could theoretically be 6-1 here, in my opinion. And then you would probably have like one more item at least. And you're like nice. super strong. You're gonna carry the game for sure. But we're still fine. Ooh. Okay. We're we can see graves. I wouldn't be so uh, timid. I see. 
I, I would probably queue like I, I would probably like uh walk forward maybe queue and then like leave to deal some damage you're so low hp and you're so strong okay you're good yeah Miss uh, the 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 minimap story. We can see Graves here. So a top lane is all about juggling all of these things, right? You play your own lane, your matchup, but you're also juggling what the hell is going on um, on the map, right? So you're always looking, right? Oh, we can see a jungler. Okay, I'm a little bit scared of the Blanc Graves. No, we can see Graves. That's fine. Okay, the Blanc's missing though. Uh, but if the blunt comes, we're probably fine here. The ADC walked up. <laughs> or some. <laughs> yeah. And here we can see, okay. We're looking at the map. Okay, now Graves gone. LeBlanc's gone. Draven's gone. Right? So that that's the, that should be in your mind, right? Like now it's starting oh. to get risky. To stay. Like now they can definitely be here, right? So if we just turn on the... You can see they're on their way, right? Yeah. So it's just like following what I like to call like the minimap story. The minimap kind of tells you a story. If you see Graves here, he can't instantly be here. But you saw him there and then he disappeared for a while. And then you can kind of put the pieces together. So top yeah, lane is like all about juggling this. You, you never really want to die like this. Okay. Because imagine... Imagine if you, like a really good top lane player, they have that in their head. So they're playing the lane and they, they're they also following the story, right? So now they know that like that is likely that there's other people that's coming, right? So imagine oh. that you backed here. Imagine that you backed here. You, you mega win. Mega win. You draw or you drew Graves, the Blanc, and then Yone. You, you just want to be three then, pretty much. Because you draw all that attention. That's a big W. Big win. So as a top laner, like it's, that's a big deal. If you can draw people towards you, but you survive, massive win. Because look at your team. You're literally giving your team like a, a huge advantage bot. They're going to win this. Like, play this scenario 100 times, they're going to win so many times. Like, 90 out of 100 times. More. <laughs> but yeah, so this is just following the... The minimap story. So this is pretty bad, right? We've missed some solo kills. We, we are... We... Like, they got the first tower here. We're not really able to push our lead. Honestly, if you feel like you can't really break the tower, you can even yeah. say you can even say like if you see that Drake is up, you can push out and then you can just recall go go to Drake with your Triforce. Recall go or TP there. Yeah, you can TP too. Okay. But if you recall and go, you can TP back top to defend the tower. Right. So that way you can translate your lead and impact the map as well. You don't always need to sit top. Even though Fiora likes like um, the entire um, split push thing and, and duo, right? She's pretty good at that. Okay, so we're still top here. This is okay. Let's get this tower. Nice. Let me just see items. Okay. Yeah, and I just get mm. <laughs> being banged again. <laughs> this is the classic, uh, um, like just tunnel visioning and not following the story at all like the okay. minimap story um i do this as well but i can tell you're completely tunneled on this 1v1 but you forget the big picture of the game okay like the the story you can see your teammates you can see yone but where are everybody else where's the blanc where's lux where's draven right where where are they if we turn this on you can see that they're in fact here, right? So imagine yeah. once again, imagine once again that you know this, like you're thinking about this in your head. This game is all about like anticipation and 
mental APM. And you're thinking about this. You're like, oh, wait, where are they? They could be here. So I'm not going to take this fight. I'm just going to... I'm just going to hover and back off a bit. You waste their time. Because they, they're spending resources to go up here to try to gank you. Right? So imagine you just think about this and you walk back. What happens is that Yone is going to die now. Because now Morgana is walking down. But... <laughs> so there's like a, a game on... on either side here of the map where enemy team spends a lot of resources to gank you and your team spends resources to gank him. So if you right. can survive and he doesn't because he obviously won't think about this, like in this rank, people won't think about this for sure. <laughs> like it ju it's just too overwhelming. Then you will just win, like easy win without doing anything. Like you, you're not solo killing anybody. It's not obvious to an untrained eye to see what you did. But you just outplayed them by walking back here. If you would. But it requires you to be thinking about the map. Okay, so we, we die again. So we die a lot, right? Yone also died. You see, if you if you walked back, he would have died, you would have lived. W for your team. We're still in a good position though. So let's see here. And here I just pushed all the way mm, in. Yeah. This tower is worth 550 gold. It's worth a lot. Tier 2 towers. So I... Like this tower you can actually do, do this. In my opinion. Because it's worth so much. You know this tower? You know how this yeah. how much this tower is worth? No. It's worth 50 gold. 50. Wow. Yeah. It's worth 50. And this tower is worth 550. I have no reason why, but that's the way it works. But it just means that this tower is worth a lot. So it's actually kind of worth your time, even though you're not here with your team. Now, like you have TP. You have TP, so this is okay. Because given that it's third Drake that your team is about to contest, I would definitely be very interested in getting securing that third Drake. But you have TP, so this is okay. Okay, I would definitely be looking at my team here to make sure that they don't die. Because the prize is the third Drake. If you can... Get the third drake, you put them on soul point. And that means you just get one more, you get soul, and you have a very good chance of winning the game. See, this tower I don't like that much. Okay. 50 gold, as I said. And uh, and even if you get an inhib, now we can talk about this inhib. And if you even if you get an inhib, it's not that good. Oh, um. One inhib is not that good. One inhib is one super minion in each lane, and the minions push um the minions push a bit more. So that means that even if it's a neutral wave that meets each other, your minions will push out push the enemy minions, which means it will deny minions from your team. So eventually, if you guys don't do anything with it you will fall behind in XP and gold because they just get, get to catch the waves while your minions are killing your income for your team. Right. So if you think about it, one uh, inhib is one super minion in each lane. So that would be three super minions per wave spawn, right? But if you have two inhibs, you actually get two super minions in each lane, right? So that would be two, two, two. That would be six. Right? Yeah. That's a massive jump. <laughs> That's a massive jump. Two two inhibitors, really good. Insanely good. One inhib, not very good. Three inhibs, you probably win the game. So given that we know this now, 
that this is not worth that much. This tower is only worth 50. We get this in it's not even that good. And that Drake is overpowered, and we already have two, so we're fighting for the third Drake. It's just a priority thing, right? So in my mind, not worth that much, this. But okay. this is really worth a lot, getting this Drake. Because also what happens here is that the winner of this fight gets third Drake, or like gets the Drake, and that would mean we get three, and possibly gets the Baron. Mm -hmm. And that means that team is like huge lead, massive lead. Baron is so good. Third Drake is so good. Like that's, you win the game. You just win the game. But here, you, not that good, right? So I would be TPing here for sure. Okay. 100%. And it just comes down to you prioritizing it wrong. Like you think this is worth more than than this, um, so you you prioritize it wrong. See now your team's losing. This is disaster, right? Now they yeah. get they get the dragon as price. You always need to think like, if a fight if a fight is high value or not. A fight is high value if after the fight the team that wins can take something for it. If they can take a Baron, massive fight, super high value fight. If they can take multiple towers, high value fight. If there's a fight, they can't take Baron, they can't take Dragon, they have to recall, they can maybe take one outer turret. It's not that high value of a fight. So it also you also need to identify what is a high value fight. A high val a value fight, you really want to win. You really want to invest your summoners, your ulti. You want to have your item spikes uh, coincide with that. This is a high value fight. But your team loses it. And the enemy team makes a massive comeback here. Because of it. Okay, you're pushing Nexus turret, which is that's pretty good that you were able to get that one. But it still doesn't really mean anything, right? It doesn't really mean anything. We 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 got inhib. That's it. And we got 50 gold from this tower. We just got shit on there. <laughs> yeah. And now you die. And now I'm very scared for the fact that they can just recall and move to Baron. Because you have a 40 second death timer. Lux is dead though. But now I'm scared. Because we didn't get Drake. And we got one inhib. And the scary thing about the inhib, as I talked about, is now your minions... Are gonna push all the time and that means they will deny creeps golden xp from you guys so you'll see that they we will be able to catch up in in levels so you can see draven's level 11 samira 12 13 12 12 12 13 and i don't know what level you are See what happens. So I like in my mind, I'm looking to get the Baron. I think it's okay to to split. Maybe you just walk mid and try to go with the Morgana Pantheon. They have good CC. Maybe you can get a kill. Because once again, this is high value, a high value fight here. If you guys get one, two kills, you can just force Baron. Because that means if they want to stop you from taking Baron, you can turn because you have a man advantage. And you can win that fight, right? So. But this is okay. You, you have TP. Like, we're splitting here. Oh, you just got two kills. You guys win the game here. In my opinion. Because now you can take Baron. You're pushing. Okay. Hmm. Okay, you I didn't, would, yeah. I would Baron. take Baron, I think. Okay. So this is another um, scenario of, like, prioritizing what is high value. What is higher value? Baron is like insane. Right. I'd rather take Baron than an inhib. Unless you can get two inhibs. But here, I don't think you can. Because there's three people that can defend this tower. Lily is not there. So I would just ping your team there to go Baron. Right. And I TP there. 
to if bear. you need to if you need to I need otherwise to. you just okay. keep pushing because let's see what happens now Ooh. wait okay fair enough okay you pull two people get a kill nice this is great They only got one tower. Oh man, I... <sighs> it's giving me anxiety. I would... <laughs> I really want Baron. Yeah. Okay, if you can get this inhib, it's fine. Yeah, you can't. So, like... If we just took Baron, we would just win the game. Okay. Because now it's not oh. fine. It's not fine. I don't care about these towers. Because... We we still ha just have one uh, inhib, <laughs> so like the waves are still pushing in. They, they there's still only one super minion in each lane. If you yeah. got this one, you would suddenly buff it a lot. So two super minions in each lane, and that and, and that would allow you. That would really pressure them. So that would mean you can probably go to towards the baron, and somebody needs to always defend. The super minions. Okay. But now you guys are in a really bad spot. Yeah. Now oh, they go Baron. Oh, this Baron. is tragic. And okay. they get the bounty for the Baron too. Yeah. So you you guys lost a game. And you have this situation, right? Where your minions are killing your gold and XP. Like, look. Yeah. Look at mid. You lose this. Your team loses these minions. Their team gets these minions. You see? The waves yeah. just... See, LB is just able to pick up the waves. And we're just... You're just losing waves. Your team. Sucks. Yeah. So I think... Um, the major mistake here was... There was two times... First, when you decided to take these, instead of TPing to secure um, third Drake and maybe Baron, you just win the game on the spot. Right. You didn't do that, and the game continued, but it's still fine. It was still fine. After you guys got two kills, Baron was the play. If you went for Baron, because you pick Baron up yourself, and it's so OP, so you can then use it to push. And you also denied Baron from them. Because now they got Baron. Then I think uh, you would have won the game very easily. Like, it would have been a chill, chill, easy win. But your team and yourself just had uh, the wrong value on what was important. Uh -oh. You guys had the wrong, like, you just prioritized wrong. Okay, the game's still, like, alive, though. Okay, one inhib. Once again, one inhib. Not that good, right? Yeah. One inhib. If Pantheon could get this one, then we're talking, right? That's really good. Yeah. Because that means you get two super minions and you get to, to just go five men here to the last inhib. Well, oh. they have to have people defending the waves coming in, right? So then you actually have a game plan, but here it's super easy for them. It just like one super minion coming in here in one lane. It's just advantageous for them, honestly. Okay, you got the dragon. That was so great. So imagine uh, you TP'd for that fight. Mm -hmm. This would have been soul. But I think the game would have been over already if you TP'd before. Um. Let's see what happens. What's happening here? I was just waiting. I couldn't see them. <laughs> if you if you wanted to uh, um, backdoor uh, an inhib, you should be way closer. You should be like, you should be in this bush. Um, to see what they're if they walk forward, maybe you can sneak in, and like 
Because even suiciding for an inhib at this point would be good. Because there's no Baron and Dragon. And I think your team will be able to hold um, the towers here until you respawn. And then you have two inhibs. And then your team can just go like to the last one. But okay. here, you're like, this doesn't really make sense if you want to backdoor inhibs because you're so far away. So I think you want to kill him. No? You see, like, if you wanted to do this, if you stand here, that means you want to fight him. Oh. But if you wanted to, to kill these, you should be standing here, closer. Because then okay. when you see Yone's here and you see people are showing, you're very quick to respond and you can quickly uh, reach this inhib. But now you're all the way over here. So you see that there might be an opportunity because you see people, but you, you're spending all this time walking and you're also showing on the wave. Yeah. And by the way, the waves are mirrored. So you can see that there's a wave coming here because the waves spawn at the same time. They're mirrored, right? So if you can oh. see on your, you can see on your map that you have a wave here. It means that they will also have a, a wave identical, like in the same position. So you could even have waited a bit here for this wave to pass. Maybe that would have taken some time though, if you didn't want to get spotted because now they see you quite early. Okay, we get the end. Oh, this is perfect to survive. Wow. Okay. Back off. Back off. Great. Uh, you should die there. But you Yeah. Die. Okay, so what no, we have a we have a plan here actually. Now we can either we can focus on this last inhib or we we can look to uh, get the baron. I don't like that you're moving down here. Oh. Because you have no TP. When I can't see baron. Hold on. Uh objective timers. Why can't I see uh, the spawn timer of Baron? That's weird. Okay, but but it's not spawning in uh, in a while though. But your your eyes are definitely on Baron and so, like that's okay. the big win condition. Uh, alternatively, you could try to have all your team like get this inhib. It's okay if you can pull multiple people and have your team pressure this. going on here okay you're looking for it okay baron's spawning in a minute i think this is too risky oh no <laughs> uh, what, what do you really want to accomplish here you want to back through the last in it i think it's, i think so yeah it's a bit too risky okay i think it's a bit too risky you also don't know if there's wards here no there aren't any wards here but um, but they knew how <laughs> I feel like because you have two inhibs, and this is the power of two inhibs, as I've talked about, like they will have so much to worry about because your minions will pressure so hard in these lanes that you will have time to be here with your team, set up a vision here, and then okay. make sure you, you play for the Baron. Because if you pick okay. up the Baron, then you can control the game. And you even have like the soul. If everything goes wrong again, you can... Any, or you feel like you can't really break their base because they're defending so well, you can just wait for the soul. And then they you're just your team is so strong. But here, this is unnecessary. Like I would just wait for Baron here. It's much safer to just be up here with your team at ward. It's too risky. Because what happens now is if you just die like this, yeah. suddenly they can win the game. Because now they can maybe play for Baron. See what happens. Okay, you have TP. Oh god, please back. No. Your team grades. So I would definitely ping. Oh, you can't control your team, but you can ping here. I would ping. This is this is gives me so much much anxiety. <laughs> because <laughs> they need you're playing for Baron and uh Soul. Right? And yeah, you, I you thought are dead. So I nobody could can die here. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're, you're right. spawning in 17 seconds, though. Yeah. But this is too risky. It's so risky. Like, they should not take a fight here. 
Like they, they see a kill and they're all chasing for it, but it's not worth it. They should just wait. Because they can't die. If if somebody dies here, you you just lose. Because then they get to have a man advantage for the soul and the, the baron. So I would definitely be pinging. Like, please. Like you already made a massive mistake dying here alone, but your team can't die. So it's clear to me that in this game, people are not thinking about the uh, the big objectives. They're thinking about getting kills here. When they should be playing for the big objective. The same with you down here. Okay. Your team should literally just set up wards here and wait for this to spawn. Or alternatively, the soul. Because here, this is just... Lilia dies and now we're in so much trouble. These low HP, they need to recall. Baron has spawned. Now Lilia's dead. Enemy team can just go Baron. <laughs> and then they can probably get soul after. And it's just over. You see, now they get Baron. Oh, you get soul maybe? No. Because I think the bonk's there. No. <laughs> it's chaos. Yeah, it's just, it's just, uh, just chaos. The game's still floating. It's insane, by the way. Yeah. Like, the enemy team should just take the battle. Can you win this game or you lose? Uh, we won in the end. Okay. It's like 40 minutes. Yeah, you lost that so. Usually, this is the reason, uh, by the way, these lower rated games last longer. Right. You look at a higher rated game, they end so quickly because people have the right priorities. So instead of like you, instead of, oh uh, shit, instead of you dying here and your team chasing for kills and dying here, people just wait for Baron. They get Baron, they get the soul. And they end the game. Okay. Because you just end the game then. You're just too strong. It's so simple. You just end the game when you're that strong. But people don't wait here. And people don't really play for the Baron and the... The soul. Like, this is so crazy. Like, what's going on here? You're... <laughs> because... Like, they know that you're not there. And that yeah. you have no TP. So they should definitely not be fighting. Oh, like, they need to be so careful and just make sure they survive. But you see that Samira here goes in when you're when you're not there, and you're not even ready to push the the inibs. Okay, let's see. We get one inhib. LeBlanc. That's it. Is he really that? Are you really that scared of LeBlanc? She does some. Oh, she's I level think. 18. Oh, yes, she's huge. Fair enough. I think I die here also. She kills me. Yeah. You see, there's, they have so much XP. It's it's this uh, inhibitor situation, right? Look at LeBlanc. Yeah. She's level 18. Pantheon's level 15. Yone's level 17. And you're level 15. That was a mistake, yeah. How do you guys win the game? What the hell? Do uh, you win this game? Yeah, we That's won. Crazy. I feel like you should have lost like five times. Yeah. <laughs> at this point. What? What? Like, I just need to. What's happening? Which? How much time do we have left? Okay, we're about to finish. Yeah. I'll just uh, try to wrap it up here. Yeah, they, they should take Baron, in my opinion. They just don't take Baron. If they can get two inibs, it's fine. You see, your team, the enemy team makes the same mistake. <laughs> right? And that's why that's why you win the game. That's oh. why the game is alive. So look look at this. Whole team's dead. Whole yeah, Baron's dead. Alive. They have three yeah. people. Yone. Um, Yone's really good at taking Baron. Sure, he's kind of low. Can't he heal up? Let's see. 
Maybe it's too low. What does he have? Now he should be fine with Bloodthirster. No, they, they should be fine. They should be able to take it. Yeah, she... So they should take Baron here. If they okay. just take Baron, they take it away from you, and then they can push. The only re reason not to take Baron would be if they could get two inhibs. Two inhibs, in my opinion, better than, than Baron. I see. But one inhib, not not even close. So they get one inhibitor, and then they just get the tower. And the, the problem now is that you guys come back up and you can play for Baron and so. And this one useless inhib, man. Like this inhib is a bait. One inhib is a bait. Okay, this is crazy game. Like, it's a crazy game. Oh my god. They're fighting. <laughs> it's so crazy. You're spreading your resources so much. Like, they're fighting here. You're taking soul. Yeah. And you're just winning here anyway. I think LeBlanc just kills them all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so much damage with the shiv. It's crazy. So... <laughs> The game would have ended once again if if your team was just on Baron, you took Soul, <laughs> and yeah. then and then you can just end the game with the. But your team is like fighting instead. This is why the game drags out so much. Yeah, I just, I just want to see the ending of this, and then uh, we'll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy it's so crazy what is happening <laughs> it's like people are everywhere that's the thing like they're fighting here and then you have some people that are here <laughs> like in in higher rating you would see everybody here on the barrel Okay. And they would be walking together and they would like, they would focus their attention on one thing. Okay. But here, there's just like, people spawn and they just right click to the nearest enemy champion and they just like, ran their champion into them. Like, yeah. zero thinking about how, the, like the big picture, like what objective to play around. Uh, I, uh... uh... They get Baron, wow. I, I feel like you value split pushing too much. Uh oh. I would probably look to secure the Baron and the Drakes more. Because this is a, another massive death, right? Yeah. Like, th this is a game losing mistake. To die here. This late into the game. By the way, this is a, like what you try to do here. When there's no minions near tower, they're very tanky. Did you know that? I, yeah. I thought I could do it. But <laughs> yeah, Maybe. you just can't. Like, it's too tanky. You see how tanky this tower is? It's not even close. It's not even close. <laughs> Look. It's too tanky. Yeah. That, if there were minions here, you probably would have done this much. You know? That's how much it matters. I probably could have killed it. Yeah, you probably could have killed it if there was like just one minion nearby. Okay. So yeah, I mean, like, hmm. The big takeaway is, honestly, from this game, to understand, like, to prioritize the objectives right. One hit in inib, not very good. It could even be bad. If you don't. Utilize the pressure you get from one inhib. Two inhibs, really good. Do I take the tower in front of the inhib or? No, it's kind of no. useless. I think this is bait. This tower. Okay. It's kind of useless. I think go into the jungle and take all the camps instead. Only if it's super free, you can take it. But don't risk anything for this tower. This tower is way more worth.
way more gold. And then in the lane, you just had to identify that you were winning and that you make sure you run him down right if you're winning. Okay. Um, and then in the mid game as well, we had the like the minimap story thing where you tunneled mm. on graves here and you just didn't follow the map. You just walk back there, you pull all the enemies towards you, and then um, you just win because Yone would die on the other side of the map and you just win that way. It seems like you have done nothing when you do that, but you actually outplay them hard. I see. All right, I think uh, like this is one of the craziest games I've seen. Yeah, just yeah, it's almost ending. Yeah, oh and I just oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Nice, nice uh, backdoor though. Thank you. But yeah, that's yeah, that's a crazy game. So I would say that's the the takeaways. Do you have any like any questions? Do you have any anything you're confused about? Uh, I think you definitely helped me a lot, and um, I will look for uh, look to um, remember what you said. Yeah. And yeah, do you think Fiora would be fine to climb like this? Yeah, but you you just need to play more. I I would I would all I would like one trick her honestly. That's uh, how one. you would climb the fastest if you're gonna commit to Fiora. Okay. One trick her and like look at videos on Fiora. There's a really cool like Chinese combo you can do. Like when you proc the R really quickly. Like I would try to learn that, for example. Maybe uh, that's not your first priority right now, but it's it's something you can do. You can like proc the R in like one second. <laughs> if you um but I would just focus on the basic. I would try to play the game more, focus on Fiora, focus on the matchups. Like, and uh, just don't get too obsessed with the the inhibs, especially one inhib there. Uh, the dragons are worth a lot. Like you don't, you can leave your lane; it's fine. You don't need to be stuck at your tower. You can recall and go go towards Drake, and uh, make sure you guys secure the Drake, and then go back top. Yeah, Drake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Um. Yeah, man. Good luck. I will. Uh, 